Good afternoon, we are group 6 and we will be presenting experiment 7, boiling point and melting point determination of organic compounds. Our presentation outline first would be the introduction comprised of the principal significance of the study and the objectives. Second would be the experimental which will discuss the melting point determination methods and boiling point determination methods. Followed by the results which are the observed melting point ranges of samples and the observed boiling point ranges of the samples. Followed by the discussion, which are the factors that affect melting point and boiling point and the sources of error in the experiment. And lastly, the conclusion and recommendations. So let's move now to the introduction. So for the principles, boiling point and melting point are physical properties of compounds where molecules are converted from liquid to gaseous phase and from solid to liquid phase respectively. These physical properties can be predicted through various factors, including the concept of intermolecular forces of attraction or IMF, branching, and symmetry. Let's discuss first IMF, which are the forces that operate between separate molecules. There are three types of IMF. First, London dispersion forces or LDF. Second, dipole-dipole interactions. And third, hydrogen bonding or H bonding. Multiple IMFs can be present at the same time, but the most dominant IMF is H bonding followed by dipole-dipole interactions, with LDF being the weakest. LDF is exhibited by all compounds, whether it is polar or nonpolar. The larger and heavier the atom or molecule, the more likely it has exposed sites for interaction, and therefore the stronger the LDF at play. Dipole-dipole interaction, on the other hand, is exhibited by polar compounds, wherein the permanent dipoles in adjacent molecules align so that the partial positive and partial negative charges are in close proximity. The more polar the molecule, the stronger the dipole-dipole forces. H-bonding is a strong dipole-dipole interaction in compounds containing a hydrogen atom bonded to either a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine atom, which are highly electronegative. Next factor is branching. It produces a more spherical and more compact molecule which results in a decrease in surface area, thus it is easier to pack, causing a decrease in melting point. The decrease in surface area also decreases the intermolecular van der Waals forces, thus decreasing the boiling point. The last factor we would discuss is about symmetry. Generally, when a compound is more symmetrical, then it would incur a lower boiling point than those which are asymmetrical. In this factor, the dipole moment of the molecules are considered. In a symmetrical molecule, dipole moments tend to cancel out and thus form weaker interactions between molecules. However, in considering the melting point of the compound, the inverse is applicable. When molecules are more symmetrical, their melting point tends to be higher given that the structure is more compact, considering the crystal lattice formation that the energies would have to break discuss the significance of the study. The determination of the boiling point and the melting point of an organic compound is an integral part of organic chemistry as both are important physical properties of compounds. These properties are key factors in studying and predicting organic reactions. Both properties can also be used in identifying compounds and in indicating the presence or absence of impurities. The smaller the boiling point or melting point ranges, the more pure the compound. These also show the physical state of substances. The melting point does this for solids, while the boiling point does the same for liquids and gases. Separately, the melting point helps in indicating the energy required to break the crystal lattices in solids, and thus is used to characterize and classify crystalline solids. Boiling point indicates the volatility of a substance, especially important in knowing where to store and how to transport specific substances, as these can be crucial when considering the safety precautions needed to be undertaken in laboratories and even in factories using these substances. For the objectives, the experiment aims to achieve the following. First, to determine the melting points of pure catechol, pure resorcinol, pure benzoic acid, and the mixture of two compounds. Second is to determine the boiling points of N-butanol, tert-butanol, and N-propanol. And lastly, to relate the observed melting point and boiling point to the structure of the organic compounds tested. Let's move now to the second part of our presentation where we will be discussing the experimental design used. Melting point determination method. A capillary tube with a 1 mm diameter and 6 cm length was prepared. One end was then melted in an open flame to seal it. A pinch of catechol was then pulverized using completely dried mortar and pestle. and was then introduced to the capillary tube by pushing the open end into the powder and tapping the closed end on the tabletop occupying a height of about 1 cm in the capillary tube. A rubber band was then used to attach the capillary tube to the bulb end of a thermometer. The setup was then dipped in an oil bath and was then slowly heated while gently stirring and observing the temperature in the capillary tube.
The temperature is when the sample first started to liquefy and when all solids disappeared was then recorded and the melting point was reported as a range. This was then repeated for the other samples, resorcinol, benzoic acid, and 1 is to 1 resorcinol benzoic acid mixture. Benzoic acid is expected to have the highest melting point range due to the presence of a carboxylic acid functional group, then resorcinol due to two alcohol functional groups in the meta position, while catechol will have a slightly lower melting point due to its two alcohol functional groups in the ortho position. The mixture of 1 is to 1 resorcinol benzoic acid is expected to have a lower and wider melting point range due to the impurity of the compound making the molecule less packed. For the boiling point determination method, a 1 mm diameter and 6 cm length capillary tube was prepared with one end sealed in an open flame. A rubber band was then used to attach a 5 ml test tube to the bulb end of a thermometer. About 10 drops of liquid sample was then added into the test tube. The capillary tube was then inserted into the test tube containing the sample, with its open end immersed in the liquid sample. The setup was then dipped in an oil bath, which was then slowly heated while gently stirring and observing the setup. Random intermittent bursts of bubbles were then observed as the temperature approached the boiling point. The temperature was then recorded when a rapid and continuous stream of bubbles were observed. The heat was then turned off, and the temperature at which the liquid entered the capillary tube was recorded. The boiling point was then reported as a range, and this was done for N-butanol, tert-butanol, and N-propanol. Expected results are that N-butanol will have a higher boiling point range due to its longer carbon chain of 4 carbons followed by N-propanol with a 3 carbon chain, while tert butanol is expected to have the lowest boiling point range due to branching which makes the compound more spherical and more compact. Moving on to the results. For the experiment, the melting points of catechol, resorcinol, benzoic acid, and a 1 is to 1 resorcinol benzoic acid mixture were determined. The observed melting point ranges are as follows. For catechol, it's 103.9 to 104 degrees Celsius. For resorcinol, it's 107 to 111 degrees Celsius. For benzoic acid, it's 113.4 to 125.5 degrees Celsius. And for the mixture, it's 82 to 89 degrees Celsius. The experiment also involved determining the boiling point ranges of N-butanol tert-butanol, and n-propanol. The observed boiling point ranges are as follows. N-butanol has an observed boiling point range of 107 to 120 degrees Celsius. Tert-butanol has 85 to 94 degrees Celsius. And n-propanol has 94 to 101 degrees Celsius. Moving on to the discussion. The melting point refers to the temperature at which a solid turns into a liquid. In order for this to happen, a certain amount of energy is needed to overcome the attractive forces in the solid. Thus, it follows that the stronger the intermolecular forces are, the higher the melting point. The relative strengths of the intermolecular forces are as follows. Ionic is stronger than hydrogen bonding, which is stronger than dipole-dipole interactions, which are stronger than van der Waals dispersion forces. The presence and influence of these forces are dictated by the functional groups present. That being said, the strength of the intermolecular forces present are also affected by the surface area and polarity. In general, the larger the surface area and the more polar the atoms, the stronger the intermolecular forces are. In turn, the melting point is also higher. As it becomes more difficult, to separate or break the intermolecular forces. Melting point is also influenced by symmetry. This is because the more compact and symmetrical a compound is, the more efficiently it packs into a crystalline lattice, which gives it a higher energy requirement for melting. For catechol and resorcinol, the experimental values are lower and have a wider range compared to the theoretical values. Catechol and resorcinol are isomers. In catechol, the two OH groups have ortho positioning, while in resorcinol, they have meta positioning. Because of the ortho positioning of the OH groups in catechol, there is a tendency for intermolecular H bonding to be prioritized compared to intermolecular H bonding which overall results 
and weaker intermolecular forces. In metapositioning, meanwhile, there is no such consequence, and it allows for more intermolecular H bonding. As for benzoic acid, the experimental range is much wider compared to the theoretical range. Benzoic acid has the highest melting point among all the samples, and this is because the structure of benzoic acid allows for the arrangement of a dimer in which two benzoic acid molecules are strongly connected to each other by two hydrogen bonds, resulting in greater intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Meanwhile, the resorcinol benzoic acid mixture shows a lower melting point range compared to any of the other samples. This may be due to the two different chemical structures resulting in chemical interaction between them. Moreover, since there are two different chemical structures, the intermolecular forces are not maximized because the arrangement is not maximized and they cannot fit as well together in the arrangement of a crystal lattice. Due to the large substituent of the resulting compound, the molecules are also less tightly packed therefore weakening the intermolecular forces of attraction. Something in common among these compounds is their aromaticity. As you can see if you look at their structures, they all have a phenyl group. This contributes to the relatively high melting point. This is because of the symmetry found in the molecule, which allows it to pack better within a crystalline lattice. Moreover, this is also because of the resonance stability of the molecule. The planar conformation of the molecules also allow them to stack upon each other, which is called stacking, and this allows more points of interaction for intermolecular forces. It was observed earlier while comparing the values that there was a decrease in melting point or broadening of its range among experimental values compared to theoretical values. This is called a melting point depression, and it is usually indicative of the presence of impurities. The impurity will disturb the crystal lattice structure of the solid, making it easier to break the intermolecular forces and effectively lower the melting point. This explains the deviation between the theoretical melting point range and the experimental melting point range. Moving on from the melting point, we now discuss the factors that affect the boiling point. Like melting point, the boiling point of a compound is highly affected by the intermolecular forces present, such as hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole interactions, and van der Waals or London dispersion forces. The surface area of the molecule itself also affects the overall strength of the intermolecular forces present in the substance. Polarity also indicates the presence of a dipole moment, which may indicate stronger intermolecular forces between the molecules of the same kind. Like melting point, impurities may also increase or decrease the boiling point, depending on solubility and other properties of the impurity. This may produce a similar effect to the melting point depression. In the experiment, N-butanol, N-propanol, and 3rd butanol was observed. We can see that with a few deviations, N-butanol and N-propanol having a wider range of boiling point, we can see that comparatively, 3rd butanol has the lowest boiling point out of the three, and this can be attributed to its structure as a tertiary alcohol. The branched structure of 3rd butanol makes the molecule spherical. Due to this sphericality, the molecule has less points for interaction for intermolecular forces. With a weaker overall IMF, pure third butanol requires less energy to break off intermolecular connections, which causes the lower boiling point of third butanol. The two other organic compounds, however, are primary alcohols that have an unbranched hydrocarbon chain. This long chain exposes more sites for London dispersion forces to take place. This allows packing of the molecules by stacking on each other. As the molecule with a longer chain, N-butanol has higher IMF and thus requires more energy to break and a higher boiling point. It is interesting to note that besides the boiling point and melting point, 
The actual room temperature state of the compounds used in the experiment reflects the strength of the intermolecular forces. It can be said that unlike n-butanol, n-propanol, and tert-butanol, which all have some degree of sphericality, catechol, resorcinol, and benzoic acid are planar aromatic molecules. As a flat molecule, they are able to interact with each other more, allowing efficient packing by stacking. This induces the physical solid state of the compounds at room temperature. However, as purely alkyl alcohols, n-butanol, n-propanol, and tert-butanol are more spherical and thus have weaker overall IMF, thus being liquid at room temperature. From what we have discussed, we can now move on to the conclusion. From the experiment, the melting point of catechol, resorcinol, benzoic acid, and a 1 is to 1 resorcinol benzoic acid mixture is summarized in the table shown. Benzoic with the highest melting point due to the formation of a dimer, and the two isomers with a relatively lower melting point, but catechol having a lower one due to the intramolecular hydrogen bonding present between the orthopositioned hydroxy substituents. Last comes the 1 is to 1 resorcinol and benzoic acid mixture, which is extremely low due to melting point depression. Essentially, the IMF in the entire system is weaker due to the inability to pack two different structures effectively on a molecular level. For the n-butanol, tert-butanol, and n-propanol, the boiling points can be seen in the table shown, with tert-butanol being the lowest due to being branched and spherical, and n-butanol being highest due to having more points for London dispersion forces, and thus higher overall IMF. From this, we can conclude that physical properties are largely attributed to the structural effects within the molecule. Intermolecular forces especially strengthen the hold of the molecules on each other, thus resulting in the need for higher energy levels to break them. This results in the higher boiling or melting point, which is the temperature that induces a phase change. Structural effects such as dipole moments, presence of intramolecular forces, functional groups, and the like all contribute as well to higher or lower intermolecular forces. This allows prediction of the behavior of the compound for experimental use. For the recommendation, we can test to see and compare the effect of other functional groups such as amines, halides, and thiols on physical properties, especially the boiling and melting point. These structural effects may also be tested for their effect on other physical properties of chemicals, such as density and solubility. That is all for our oral report. Thank you and stay safe.